Back to that, Gary, there's another one that uh, has come out. It's called The Jesus Dynasty by James Tabor. This is a fellow that's an archaeologist, University of North Carolina, works with Bart Ehrman there, and the fact is he's got a very interesting book about Jesus and the Jesus Dynasty. Gary, tell us about this. Well, unlike some of the other things that are coming out right now, James Tabor is a scholar. He's a University of Chicago grad, department head at, at UNC Charlotte. And uh, this book is an is a interesting mixture of ar archaeology, uh, exegetical work, some sociological distinctions, traveling here and there, putting pieces together, and and almost like a sleuth, you know, you're going to be kind of taken through this book to different uh, settings. I think some of the major claims in this book that are going to hit the the uh, TV and radio waves uh, are that uh, first of all he is going to separate the early Christian tradition from a James and Mary basically family of Jesus tradition that goes this way and then later the other divergence is Paul. Now Paul writes so many things in the New Testament is so influential and makes his way around so much the Mediterranean world he actually becomes the more influential of the two and Paul's tradition kind of slams the door on the James, Mary, Jesus family tradition. Yeah, in, in Jesus dynasty the fact is is that that uh, uh, he didn't say that he was God you want to erect this dynasty and he passes the baton to James. Right, it's, it's almost a genetic dynasty, hence the title of the book. Now, he's sure that Jesus died, Absolutely. so he contradicts uh, some of the other books we're going to talk about, but he's sure that Jesus died, right. but then he says that the body was moved by, and then he speculates who it was, he says, comes back to the mother of Jesus. Mary and some of the other ladies in particular moved the body, and what gets them past Holy Saturday, so to speak, this day of despair and despondency and uh, we thought he was the one who would save us from the Romans kind of view, is this rah-rah, rally the troops, uh, and the bloodline that he passes on. And then on the other side, here comes Paul later, and he wants to divinize Jesus. And so you have two tracks, Paul, the culprit, the, the, uh, you know, the pure tradition of Jesus' family, and the corrupt tradition of Paul. Another one of the key themes in that book is that possibly, and he's careful to say, could be, but he spends so much time on it, you get the idea, he thinks this, that Jesus has a father, and it's not Joseph, it's uh, a man named Pantera, who is a Roman soldier, and an acquaintance of Mary, who knows, um, was this uh, a rape, was it a willing thing, he says, I don't know, we don't know how to put this in there, but he tracks a Pantera, a Roman soldier, up to Germany, and says, we have his gravestone here, and kind of tracks him back to, to Sidon in the Middle East and says, uh, hey, you know what? When Jesus goes to Sidon and it says that it was a, he wanted to be quiet about this, guess what? Maybe he was going to see his father. So this whole father tradition, the Pantera thing, which by the way, seems to me a very tenuous mixture of archeological, here's a tomb with words, could be this, could be that, could be this city, and then it almost becomes, he, now he doesn't say this, but it almost becomes a could be, later it becomes a, well, sort of is, not quite, but sort of, but you're left with this, Jesus' father's name's Pantera, and when he visits Sidon, he's going to see his father. You know, so it's this, this kind of secret theme.